buckle up because it's gonna be a long ride it's gonna be a wild ride nobody cares but we're gonna tell you anyways this is popcorn chats <laughs> uh what's up everyone welcome back to popcorn chats i'm mckay and i'm katie and this week we actually have hopefully i mean who knows how this episode will go but hopefully you know, i'm content. feeling good i'm feeling good i'm feeling good i i have a lot that i feel like we can actually discuss Me today too. We actually have a new movie to talk about, The Last Duel, yeah. by Ridley Scott, starring Adam Driver, Matt Damon, Jodie Comer, and like halfway through I turned to Katie and I was like, is that Ben Affleck? <laughs> yeah, because I was like, who is that dude? He looked familiar. He looked really familiar. And then I was like, oh yeah, Matt Damon and Ben Affleck can't make movies without each other. Yeah, they're like besties. Yeah. Ben Affleck and Matt Damon. I wonder if Ben Affleck wanted Adam Driver's role and they were like, literally no. <laughs> They were like, you can't have it. We need at least one draw to this movie because we both know y'all aren't pulling any. <laughs> yeah, I came for Jody. You came for Adam. Adam. And then my man turned out to be Garbaz Rat, but we will get into that. Um, <laughs> yeah. First, Tragic. check in. Katie, how's life? Oh, it's good. I'm hungover. I just went to, I was homecoming yesterday. And they fucking lost, which tragic. was literally so embarrassing and tragic. Um, but we don't have to talk about it. I had a great time with my friends. And Good. yeah, I'm just looking forward to another week of capitalist hell. <laughs> Starting tomorrow. Oh, actually, I did just you. get a Venmo notification. Oh, really? Did someone Venmo you? I think I got paid for a video. Yay. Tragic. Anyways, make it, make it rain. How are you? <laughs> uh, I'm same old, same fucking old. I did not do much this weekend. Well, actually, I made con like I worked on content stuff for like my TikTok and my Instagram, not my personal Instagram because I don't give a fuck about that one anymore. <laughs> but just worked on making some content and watched a lot of Scandal. Started season three of You. Oh really? Because that came out. Yeah. yeah. Did you, have you watched you? I didn't watch the second season. The second season was not great. And I'm not like loving the third. I think it was kind of a show that it's like, it doesn't need to be more than one season. Right. But I, I'm liking it. I mostly just find it very fascinating that Joe so wholeheartedly believes that like he's a good guy. And that's fascinating to watch a character like that. Right. Like, cause then I started going back and I'm like, do I need to watch season one before I started watching season three? So I watched the pilot episode and that whole time he's like, see if I wasn't here, like something could have happened to you. Or, and like, you want me to know your name because you paid with your credit card. And it's just so fascinating because he like truly wholeheartedly believes that he's a good guy. Yeah. And it's like scary because of that, because he's just like coexisting in society. And then, so I jumped back and I was like, I'm not fucking rewatching all this and I jumped back and then in the first episode of the third season him and the wolf lady whatever her name is are at this party this like neighborhood block party and he's regularly conversing with people and having normal ass conversations like a normal person but then in his head he's like you pretentious fu and he's like talking in his head of being like you guys will never know like whatever it's just so fascinating to watch him like socialize Ugh. and be normal but then in his head he's like a psychopath <laughs> he's like Keller Bella. Yeah. That kind of like feeds into this movie a little bit and Adam Driver's of, character. Yeah, of them and, and Matt, Matt Damon, Damon too. too. They yeah. both think that they're good people. Like they both think they're the good guys when it's like they're both literally rapists. Literally. So I have a question. Yeah. Is your live thing that's happening this coming Friday. Yes. So tomorrow when you guys are listening to this. Yes. Is that going to be like saved so we can go back and watch it? I think it'll be posted on her channel. Okay. Because yeah. I work till close. I'll try to hack. I know. But also I don't know if like any of the content tent is going to be anything that you're like interested in because it's like talking about books and stuff. But I'm I'd interested in you. Oh, I love that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> over all of a sudden <laughs> i've been doing so good today and now all of a sudden i'm like <gasps> do you not have a t-shirt on Amy? i have a thermal why did you wear a long sleeve maybe you should take your sweatshirt off it was cold earlier it's fine oh. so maybe we should first start off with a trigger warning if you haven't seen yeah. this movie and you're sensitive to rape don't go see it because yeah. there was no warning it whatsoever i feel like though if you knew the gen general premise i didn't you didn't know any, like, no, you didn't know literally this, anything about it. I knew it. that they were, like, knights. I knew it was okay. a period piece. Okay. But I didn't know it was based on a true story. I didn't know, was not expecting to rape 
scenes. Okay. So I would say if you're sensitive at all to that, like, probably just we'll catch you in the next episode yep. even because we can't constantly say this whole time, like, trigger warning before right. we're going to bring it up because it's, like, going to be woven into the discussion of this entire film. Yeah. Do we want to do stand-up star? Sure. Do you have one? No. So why don't you go first? Let me think. Because, I mean, like, right off the bat, I would be like, of course I know who my stand-up star is, but, like, actually, I don't know. Well, let me just say that I was very pleasantly surprised by Matt Damon's performance. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I think his character is trash, and I thought he was trash from the beginning to the very yeah. end. Like, I never was rooting for this man no. by any means, except for when his victory meant that Marguerite would be like, saved. To, yeah. That was the only time I was rooting for him, and I still was wishing that he would die. I was hoping that then he would die after, like, like bleed out. Yeah. yeah. I was hoping that then, that it would end with them both dying, and them being like, okay, Marguerite, like, you can go home and be with your son. I was worried that he was gonna die, too, and then she was, like, so then all three of them were gonna die. Yeah. Because if he just, like, collapsed, then I feel like... They would be like, it's God's like, will. It's God! Yeah. The Lord has spoken. I thought he... All the actors in this did a very good job, even Ben Affleck, like, yeah. everyone was bringing it, and it was, you know, at first it was a little wary, I was a little worried, because it just kind of was a slow start, but that's yeah. kind of anything that you have to build a world with, and, like, introduce these complex characters and everything, but once it got going, I was, like, very in intrigued and excited. Yeah. So, in conclusion, my standout star is definitely Jodie Comer. Mm -hmm. I love her so much because of Killing Eve, but she played her kind of understated in the first two chapters of the film, and then in the third one, we just really got to see her shine, mm -hmm. and we got the truth, and I just think she was perfectly cast for this role. I totally agree with that. I don't know. I'm torn because even though the first part of the movie, like chapter one, was my least favorite because it was following Matt Damon, and I'm just like, I just don't care. Like, he was still captivating and still gave a very good performance. And then chapter two, following Adam Driver, I was, like, totally enthralled by him, too, and I thought he was equally as captivating. And then in the last chapter, I thought Jodie Comer was great. Mm -hmm. And each of them, which is the point, each of their chapters is their truths. So it makes sense that each of them would stand out the most in that. But, like, then looking back at the film as a whole... Like, also, Ben Affleck, I thought, was incredible in his role because I was like, I didn't even realize that it was him for the longest time. I don't know. I really, act, I don't think I have one, honestly, because mm -hmm. I think they each had their moment to shine in the film, and they all took that and really ran with it. So yeah. I feel like that's a cop-out answer, but... So, starting off, going into this, first of all, so you didn't know a single thing about it besides that they were knights. Yeah. <laughs> so that... We were probably gonna duel. <laughs> So yeah, that was probably um, a bit of a, <laughs> a bit of a shock. Then I I didn't realize that it was based off of true events, and I didn't realize that <laughs> this is maybe me being naive and maybe blinded by Adam Driver. But I didn't realize that it was like about a rape. I thought that it was like, granted, so I didn't know the story. Or really much more than you, but I truly thought that, like, Matt Damon and Jodie Comer were married, and then, like, Adam Driver and his wife, like, had an affair, and then they, like, dueled for, like, her. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize that that is so not the case, and that it is a lot more tragic than that. Yeah. So that was shocking for me. So, like, I kept waiting, like, especially in Adam Driver's part, I kept waiting in that scene for her to, like, turn around and be like, oh, like, yes, thank you for, like, coming over. <laughs> you know, like, I kept waiting yeah. for that moment. And then when that didn't arrive, I was like, what the fuck? And yeah. then in her chapter, then I was waiting, I'm like, I'm like, how does this play out from her perspective? And then I was like, okay, so this is really not what I was thinking. Yeah, well, in Adam Driver's chapter, I was like, you know, maybe – she likes him a little bit, but we're seeing through his perspective all these, like, stupid signs that he's like, oh, that means she yeah. likes me, which is problematic. And then, I mean, when he raped her, like, during Adam Driver's chapter, I was like, I was a like, rapist. That was yeah. Just because she was, like, laughing and shit. I don't know. She still said no multiple, multiple times. times. And it's just sad because he goes on to be like, well, she made protests like most women do and it's just because like, she's a lady so like of course she has to protest it's like i'm not a huge period piece person in general because it really does upset me how 
fucking horrible people used to be to one another. Yeah. And just, like, how awful, like, literally the awful conditions that women have lived in for... Forever. Forever. Since forever. And also, I really struggle with just looking at big swaths of people and imagining how that must smell. People... <laughs> Like, <laughs> when they have, like, no personal hygiene. <laughs> and deodorant and has not been invented. No, honey, it hasn't. Neither has toothbrushes, toothpaste. We oh. need to get them a Listerine. So when he was like, give my good friend a kiss to show our good faith, I was like, how did they all not literally just eradicate themselves? Because if they're just, like, all randomly kissing each other, and not saying that people don't randomly kiss each other now, but if that was just, like, a sign of good faith, that how many people did Adam Driver kiss at that party yeah. that then went home and kissed their husbands? Like, I'm sorry. Well, they did have a plague, and Matt Damon's fucking wife and child died. Well, I know, but how did they all not just fucking die? I don't understand. I don't know, and especially now after living through a pandemic. <laughs> right, it's yeah. It's even, like, more triggering. <laughs> also, there's a lot of, like, weird customs and things that people do in, like, period dramas and stuff. And I know that there's always, like, researchers and um, dramaturgs who, like, make sure that everything is historically accurate. So I don't doubt that that custom of kissing somebody to show good faith yeah. is like a real custom. Yeah. But when I'm watching stuff like this, I'm just like, that was weird, but I guess that's what people did back then. Yeah. <laughs> like you could have them just fuck each other, like right in front of everybody else. And I'd be like, all right. Cause I guess it. it must've been how it was like. Yeah. Yeah. Like reality be damned. Yeah. For me, because I, mm. I don't know what was fucking going back. What was going on back in the 1300s? No. <laughs> I used to not like period pieces as much. And I still wouldn't say that they're my favorite. However, I just have more of like an appreciation, I feel like, over the past couple of years for like the costuming and for like the customs like that. That is just entertaining. And I think maybe even part of it has to do with like the trauma of the past year and a half basically that to go to like a time that is like so vastly outside of the realm of possibility right now even movies that aren't like obviously covering the pandemic or any sort of illness it's still like contemporary but to then like get completely outside of any world that we know is even more of an escape even though it's horrible it's bad but i love the costuming mm -hmm. i just i kind of i like the era like i like the medieval era not for really anything else except just for that it's aesthetically entertaining right <laughs> i feel yeah. like and a cool setting right and you Politics can appreciate the else aside. <laughs> yeah you can appreciate the work that goes into like the set building and yeah. even just like the the way that they must have had to film this i'm very curious and interested to know what the filming process was like and if yeah. they filmed each person's perspective like if they were filming that scene at the party where Jody and Adam kiss mm -hmm. in good faith or whatever. Like, did they just film from all three of their perspectives Yeah, that day on set? Or, like, I, it, I don't know. I just appreciate, like, probably all the work and thought that went into this. Yeah. And there's not many films that are like, okay, this is from this person's perspective and this is how this person saw the situation and that is so true to life like mm -hmm. we all are living under different truths like the last presidential administration is a clear example of that that some people live in a different reality than the rest of us no that was petty but <laughs> no for real like everybody is but, the hero mm -hmm. in their own story yeah and that's what i like about villains most of the time is that they see themselves as the hero right. which is why it's like you know not everyone thinks that they are the greatest person ever like how Katie and I talk about how sometimes we think we are at a godlike level and then other times we are like, we are your boss raw. Mm -hmm. <laughs> in this, I liked that in each perspective, or I will say mostly for the guys, mostly for the guys, they each saw themselves as like great guys, especially Matt Damon, like the way that he treats Marguerite and all of his uh, moments there, he's shown as being like very caring and tender and like attentive to his wife. And then we see it in her perspective and he's anything but. Mm -hmm. So to him, he's thinking like, I'm this great husband. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go and get all this glory for my wife because she's been wronged. But in reality, it's like he wants the glory for himself. And it's like an excuse to fight his friend turned enemy that he's just jealous of. Yeah. Like he doesn't, he doesn't give a shit that his wife was raped. No. He only cares that he gets to fight his enemy now and that his enemy like got to be with his wife. Like, I think that's how he sees it. And yeah. how even more pointed than in that scene when he's like, well, I don't want him to be the last man that had you. Yeah. It's like, what the fuck, dude? Yeah, and even, like, from the very beginning where he was acting like that 
piece of land is rightfully ours because you loved growing up there in the summer. And yeah. then in her perspective, we see him being like, I want my land. Yeah. yeah. And <laughs> if, but what I do appreciate is in chapter one, you and I both were like, this man is a bitch boy. It's not so rooted in his POV where it's like, we yeah. see him as a flawless person. Yeah. Because I never saw him as a flawless <laughs> person. Not one time. He has pick me girl energy. He really does. And a botched haircut. Oh, <laughs> My God, that should have been the standout star because she Matt, was an eyesore. Matt Damon's mullet Gosh. mohawk is the standout star of The Last Duel. You heard it here first, folks. Botched. Only it's yeah. the standout star because it steals yeah. the thunder in every scene it's in. You can't look away. No. No, Katie, from the moment he came on screen, I needed to turn to you and I was just like, botched. And I held myself for so long until finally, like, we had made eye contact another part part way through and I ha- finally had to be like it was festering inside of me I'm like I just need to like speak it out into the world that his oh hair is so botched <laughs> it was though Jodie Comer I think that's how you pronounce it if it's I not think- sorry but her hair at the party oh my god that was oh, also botched. Oh, that was botched. I was about to be like, her hair looked great. Yeah. Because she was like always like walking around, like very Rapunzel-esque. Yes. Oh my God. She's but, yeah. stunning. She and even stunning. with that botched hair, I like I was, I'd still let her hit it for free. Yeah. <laughs> but. Yeah. How'd you do that? She is just She's got beautiful. the two braids up it by her ears and then the yeah. ponytail going down. Yeah. Oh, honey. It is not the look. No. And I'm, I'm not saying I have the best looking hair. You know, I don't have a whole lot going on in that department. I kind of just wake up. I can't tell you the last time I ever got a brush through this mop on my head. But Yikes. damn, I would not be caught dead with that <laughs> princess layout. You won't let me try to do that with your hair. <laughs> New Halloween no. costume. No. Forget Pete and Timmy. Oh, <laughs> we go as Matt Damon and Jodie <laughs> Comer. <laughs> I would, both of us would just be botched. <laughs> yeah. We'd look like clowns. Yeah. We're gonna look like clowns anyways, but. But fun clowns. Mm-hmm. And then Adam Driver's hair, though. Like, he just, he has fantastic hair. Mm-hmm. And I can't say a negative thing about it. About Adam Driver. Let's separate. Let's just make the distinction here. Y'all know, I love Adam Driver. I am a ride or die stand for Adam Driver from, like, day one. But, obviously, his character in this is Garbage Rot. So, I... So, let's not get anything twisted if it somehow ever at some point comes across that I'm, like, loving on Adam Driver. I promise that it is not, like, his character. Right. Like, his character is Garbage Rot. So, I just want to preface that in case if I'm, like, oh, I love him at some point. It's, like, yeah. I love Adam Driver the person, not his character he plays in this. I could just see my Myself, like getting on a tangent later and then like it's sounding bad going back and it's like let's just let's I, not get it twisted i think we I are hope, all mature I hope enough people here know, to know but you can separate an actor from the character that they play i think ben affleck's character was in love with him yeah in this take your pants off yeah <laughs> take your pants off <laughs> Wait, also, the priests when they were kissing. Yeah, what was that? I don't know. But and again, I was just like, all the okay, kind of stuff I, I know. And then when they, like, three of them were in the bedroom with uh, Matt Damon and Jodie Comer, like, to bless the bed. Yeah. I was like, is that, but again, it was kind of like, okay, I guess if that's how it was, but what the fuck. I just want to say, thank God I wasn't alive during this time. I would not last two seconds. I couldn't do it. No. I just have, like, women are, like, we are the most resilient species. We really are. Like, the commentary that this film made on, like, how women have had to be silent about their struggle for so long. (sighs) And I think it really also did a good job of being like, see, this shit still happens now. Yeah. Where people are, like, questioning women's integrity and, like, oh, it's up to the man to, like, defend her. And once the two men fight then and like one wins out over the other then everybody believes her but like yeah no one will believe her up until that point and like that court hearing scene oh my god during marguerite's chapter was so like that could have been taken out of the fucking brett kavanaugh like yeah just because the me too movement and everything has been so prominent in the in recent years like this shit has been going on for forever and i think that that's lost on people a lot we are always like well prior to the me too movement it's like that so forever like that's (laughs) all of human history that women have just been being raped or all these other injustices and atrocities and that being treated as subhuman for forever and you see that then in the mom 
the yeah. conversation with the mother Definitely. after she's praying. The whole time you're like, this mother sucks. Yeah. And then when she's like, you think that this didn't happen to me? Yeah. And then she's like internalized it so much and like taken on the shame that the men like put around just women in general. <clears throat> that then now she's like condemning another woman or another woman when she should be like rallying behind her. And instead she's like, how could you do this to my son? Yeah. It's like, what the? You think that you have a toxic mother-in-law? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This lady tops it. But I mean, you have to feel for her though at the yeah. same time. She's oh. like, Marguerite's like, at what cost though did yeah. you keep the truth to yourself? And she's like, I'm alive because I kept the truth to myself, honey. Like, know your place. But then I really appreciated the line that Marguerite followed that with where she was like, and you paid a, a very great price yeah. to keep your life. And that was, you could tell, I really commend the actress who plays Matt Damon's mom in this, in her expression there. That's the first time that somebody has ever been like I'm sorry for what happened to you and you didn't deserve that yeah and you can see it on her face like oh shit yeah you can't fault her for her reaction when you that's just like how it was yeah or like even the friend's reaction too yeah like yeah friend you suck yeah you're botched but I also but like I also get her reaction too because it's just how society viewed women when they spoke up about anything that was an injustice to them. And she flat out was like, I'm repulsed by my husband. Yeah. But she's like, yeah, I'm just going to keep on living life because that's just like what you did. Yeah. So she's like, if I'm repulsed by my husband and like you said that he was handsome and then now you're claiming he raped you, like, you know, what up? Just like, don't make a fuss about it. And I can't say, you know, I, I again, I went into this movie completely blind I had no idea what it was about at all like at first I was kind of like "Ooh, she's pitting these men against her like my instinctive reaction wasn't to automatically believe her right when she in chapter one told John that she was raped and I was like well I want to see the other parts of the story yeah and that's that's a flaw of mine and like we're still you know how you're saying it's a flaw of like society and how we the mentality surrounding just women and women and men and how like sort of just the interactions and yeah. stuff between all of us like we still see it to this day that I wasn't instinctively like oh she's telling the truth yeah I was like well I want to see the other sides of the story well and I felt the same way this is how I thought that after the first chapter went down this is how I thought the story was going to go I thought that when he was gone that then Jacques, Adam Driver's character, came over. They started having an affair. And then she realized that she was pregnant. And then when Matt Damon came home, she knew that it obviously couldn't have been his. Mm-hmm. So then she was like, well, I'm going to claim this. And then hopefully he like, I, I don't know. And then I was hope I was thinking that they were like having an affair. Mm-hmm. And that they were like mutually into this relationship. And then when we saw from his perspective, that's when I was like, yeah, that's not how this all is going to go down. Yeah. And she was just like straight up telling the truth. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. There was no, it it just sucks that like our initial instinctive gut reaction when she was literally telling the truth was to be like, well, what's really going on? You know? And we are, I would say that I am like, I believe women and I, you know, but, but we have that, like, gut reaction. I don't know. Well, but I... If someone came to me in real life and said yeah. this, I would not second guess her. Same, yeah. But for, like, a movie's purpose, when yeah. we're watching it, and we know that there are... Go- and then when this first thing is, like, De La Cruz, whatever the fuck his name was, <laughs> his truth and it's like chapter one when then I know that we're going to be getting other perspectives yeah I know that we have to go we still have like two hours left of this movie to figure this shit out so I didn't think that it was going to be as cookie cutter cut and dry as that where in real life if a woman came up to me and I believe if like a woman came up to you you would never be like well let's kind of like hear other perspectives yeah because again it's like different it's a movie and fiction granted this was based on a true story but still for like the intents and purposes this was like an entertainment yeah. for us yeah, where real right. life would be a different reaction. Yeah, it's definitely different, but I just think I like the way that this film makes commentary about that. Sorry, buddy. I'm sorry, buddy. And that one person said, like, why would she do all this? What is there for her to gain out yeah. of this situation? Why would she? And, like, we see it right off the bat, even in chapter one. Like, she's having to sit in a room full of people 
and have her husband talk about something that happened to her. Yeah, and then have him be like, go tell everyone. Yeah. Go tell everyone about this traumatic event in my wife's life. Make yeah. sure everyone knows about it. And it's like, there's no wonder that women at this time and today don't come forward because you see what happens and then... I mean, not only is it, like, the public or the husband's reaction, but then it's, like, the community's reaction, and then it's, like, the court of law that they have to go in, and it's, like, public opinion, and then she's sitting at this trial talking about how her sex life is with her husband, and the men... They're like total, I don't even, they, they so are like, we know everything there is to know about women's bodies. We are so educated on them. And we just know for a fact that you have to reach pleasure to have a child. It's just science. When he said that, I was like, it's what? just not the case. <laughs> no. You are incorrect. Yeah. Like, um, just no, no. I've seen what I needed to see. And, and no. <laughs> I'm convinced that women did not orgasm until 2020. <laughs> no, 2005. <sighs> That's an odd year to put it on, but pop off. I don't know. But yeah, there's just no way. And especially was it on his wedding night when then he rolls over and he's like, was that pleasurable for you? Read yeah. the room. Like we know men are stupid as fuck, but when she is laying there with a pained look on her face and hasn't like moved or make any noises of affirmation, is that really a question you need to ask? Like, was that pleasurable for you? No. That's like a guy these days being like, did you finish? And it's like, <laughs> really no. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> I feel like if you have to if ask have that to question, ask, the answer is no. <laughs> yeah. You probably don't want to know the answer. So they were just so stupid of them being like, well, great. She said that she found pleasure. So can't be rape. You can't get pregnant from rape because you have to, both parties have mm -hmm. to have pleasure to conceive. And when she's like, no, I didn't feel any. They were like, huh, hold on. Couldn't have been a rape. Yeah. And then what? like, she's also prior to this fucking monstrosity going on with the incident with Adam Driver's character. She is feeling like she's, it's her fault that her and Matt yeah. can't get pregnant because she's not having a good time. Yeah. And she goes to the doctor about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the doctor too is like, well, you do, you, do you finish? And she's like, I mean, how would I like know that? Right. Yeah. And he's like, well, if you're feeling pleasure, then you have. And she's like, okay, well, I guess Fuck me, whatever. So <laughs> trash. So this stupid. everything it just makes me sad. I know like for different reasons you would not like survive back in this time, but even as a straight woman, I could not fucking do it either. <laughs> because I just know I would be matched up with the most botched fucking <laughs> First of all, I would be blind because there weren't a such thing as glasses. <laughs> My natural hair botched. <laughs> also, mental health was probably a real oh my struggle God. because there was no light. I would have been killed at like the age of 12. <laughs> I would have just been. <laughs> yeah, if I ever saw a horse die too, that oh would send me into a spiral. I know. I know. The amount of animal violence in this. It was bad. And the only reason that like the final scene, especially when the white horse was down and like Matt Damon's horse, the only reason that like I could that I could stomach like looking at it is because I had seen stills from the set like of this prop. So I just had to keep telling myself like that's a prop, that's a prop, that's a prop. But then when like Adam Driver's horse was crying because he was like trapped under it, you know, and they were battling next to him, I'm like, if this horse doesn't get away right now, I'm going to flip. Yeah. Just to think about like that's another reason why I don't think I like period pieces. It's just because there has been so much injustice and humans really yeah. are just absolute garbage they are men in particular it's yeah. just like every other scene is them fighting over what like oh, really yeah, what's what? the fucking issue yeah y'all can't even pleasure a woman go back to they can't do anything grade. right no literally nothing right and we've been letting these fucking buffoons run the planet Get away with it one note on the <laughs> one note just on the horses though <laughs> the, <laughs> the opening scene though i did really like it reminded me a lot of battle of the bastards mm -hmm. that episode when it was like the horse is charging like i don't want to see a single horse be harmed but i do really like i like the sound and like the adrenaline of the horses all charging together but then i don't want to see them like clash i just want them to like go on a little a little trot <laughs> a little run together yeah i okay. like how in matt damon's version of the story he saves adam driver's life and then in adam driver's version 
He's like, I need to go save him because yeah, he will be like, slaughtered. They're like, well, there he goes. Should we let him die? And Adam's like, eh, we shouldn't. No, let's go. <laughs> and then he saves his life. And then yeah. also when he's when Matt Damon's being knighted and he's like, be quiet. And oh, that was during his chapter two, which was embarrassing. <laughs> and no one clapped. <laughs> So fucking funny. We both literally laughed at that point. We kind of turned to each other. We were like, because at this point, we were like, this is the biggest bitch we've ever seen. Yeah. And then he comes home and he's like hacking up a lot, which that was the truest shit of this whole movie was him coming home and being like, I have this horrible fever and acting like he's on his deathbed. Yeah. And then we get it in Jodie Comer's and he's like got a slight chill. Yeah. But he's like, I am on the verge of death, but I must go to Paris because I yeah. am like the almighty Lord himself. Yeah, and his version she's like begging him to stay and yeah. then this one she's like, no, stay please. <laughs> it's like, I would love to suffocate under you and again and pretend oh. to enjoy myself so that you don't kill me for not burying your fucking seed. I know! Which brings me to the question then. So like, at the end, I was kind of expecting the child to have like a head of dark hair Yeah. at the end because that would have given us like a, a good idea of whose son that was yeah. because we don't know. Like it no. could be I and I kind of, of like that you don't know because she did want a child. Yeah, and, and she it got has it. Blonde hair like hers. Yeah, it's her kid. Yeah, like, fuck the other two men. And Matt Damon's dumbass goes and dies in the fucking Crusades. Can you imagine? Fucking surprise. She probably threw a party. She did. And surprise, surprise, because yeah. the Crusades are literally the dumbest fucking war I've ever heard of in my entire fucking life. You really think that a man in the sky wants you to go kill that other dude across the river? Get fucking hypothermia? HIV from the river? Just, so what? For what? Who's telling you to do that? You know what? That was God's way of sparing the women. They were like, let's just send all these men off and fucking die. They want to kill each other anyways. So yeah. Let's just let them fucking do it. And let the women have the homes... Let them Some run peace in. and quiet yeah. for a little bit. Can you imagine her? I would have loved to have seen that, like, jump cut into the future of her getting that news and her being like, oh no. <laughs> Looks so sad. Some in a tear. Also, that dress looked great on her. Yeah. So then when he came home and he's like, you're a harlot, I'm like, she's stunning. Yeah. And if you can't appreciate that beauty on your own wife. And she did that for you. you. She did that yeah. to, like, welcome you home. Yeah. What a chode ass. <laughs> for real. What a chode. <laughs> Friends, we both just sit here and fan ourselves and trash on men. That's our fucking episode. But another thing. But it's fact. Another thing that I did really appreciate about the ending was she got her little land where she loved growing up and now she gets to raise her son there. Yes. And you know she's going to raise a good son. Yes. A respectful man. Yeah. Respectful, consensual king. Yep. Who can actually bring his wife to pleasure. Yep. Or husband. Or husband. Well, at this time, probably not. You never know. That wasn't allowed. Yeah, but, well, his manly lover. Yeah. Like, Ben Affleck and uh, Adam Driver in this. Like, yeah. he could have had a relationship like that while also having a wife. Yeah. I mean, they were definitely fucking. A hundred percent. They were fucking next to each other, which is basically fucking. Yeah. I feel like Ben Affleck's character was more into Adam Driver than Adam Driver was into him. Yeah. Ben Affleck he, like, radiated did... very, like, bi energy in this. He shed it a tear. He shed yeah. it a tear. He shed a tear when his lover passed away. He did. And what a bad death. Ooh, poked in the throat. Oh. And then dragged through the street with your bare ass hanging out. Oh, I know. That was but really you know bad. what? But That's I mean, deserved. 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 And then you know what made me so mad is then when they're like trotting out of there is that everyone is like hailing Matt Damon. And he's like got his arms spread wide. He's touching babies. Yeah, someone's passing their baby up yeah. to this man. I mean, he's dirty. <laughs> he's got blood on his hands. He just killed a person. You're like, ah, kiss my baby, please. Oh my what god. The fuck. They also thought that you had to have an orgasm to get pregnant. So these people were not the brightest of all. <laughs> no. You can't fault them. But he's like, he's getting all of this praise and like these people are all like in on him what like literally nothing for killing a man who was a rapist but he's a rapist himself and why are they applauding this man when beforehand they were like ready to burn his wife for lying if he would have lost a duel yeah and why are they all not like sorry yeah and why are they why is no one like why don't you guys just go ahead and like leave in peace like why do we need to have this fucking celebration and he's soaking up all the attention he's loving it yeah because he's a little bitch boy who has never felt satisfied in himself and has always been a very jealous person and always felt overlooked so now he has his moment of glory for like the worst thing ever Mm. 
And he's loving it. Mm-hmm. He, and then her just, like, trotting along behind him, and you can just tell how uncomfortable she is. Yeah, because oh. all these people are cheering and celebrating. Yeah. Because they're like, oh, she was telling the truth. She was raped. It's so backwards. It's so fucked up. Yeah. And this poor woman, and so many women have gone through this, or worse, mm-hmm. or just... And I'm just... I'm horrified and sad about it. And that this was, like, their entertainment. You know, like, they yeah. were all so excited to see this duel happen. And, like, the king is, a like, child. out of his seat. I know. Well, first, the Joffrey king Joffrey is- energy. <laughs> <laughs> At first, I thought it was Joffrey, I feel- and I was like, good casting. But it wasn't. No. Tragically <laughs> not. No. No, that was fine. It was just, like, him jumping out of his seat. Like, he was enjoying it. Like, people were enjoying watching this. But, I mean, when you have literally nothing else yeah. for entertainment, I guess, pop off. But people were fucked up back then. I mean, they're still fucked up. But, yeah, it's, like, different level. Oh my god, and then, you know what scene I really liked was the scene when Matt Damon came to see Ben Affleck's character, and they're, like, having that party or whatever in that room, and he, like, talks about his knighthood, and they're like, oh, congratulations, and Adam Driver, like, refers to him as sir or something, and he has a temper tantrum over being called sir. Yeah. And goes on, like, a little rampage. Yeah. And he's like, once again, you are a child, but it was, like, so well done. And also when Adam Driver gets to take um, Matt Damon's land and he comes and he's like, I've waited 20 years! I know! (laughs) Sad for you, honey. That (laughs) is, you will look pathetic. Yeah. And when they're standing there like about to get married through Jodie Comer's point of view and they're literally sitting there arguing in front of her about land and like that was supposed to be included in my dowry and then like is she going to produce me an heir and the dad's like yeah she can definitely do that for you maybe consult the woman but of course they don't and she just has to stand there and listen to that. But then in his perspective, we saw this, like, beautiful wedding of them standing there and, like, holding hands and having, like, the priests bless them. Because he sees it as, like, this magical occasion. And she sees it for what it is, is a literal trade between men. Like, she's a piece of property. Yeah. Which, even in the rape, they were like, it's property damage or whatever. Yeah. They said something along those lines. They said, like, property. That guy was like, well, technically, like, he just wrecked your property, so that's really not, like, something to fight to the death over. James, cut the (laughs) cameras. You know what I'm thinking about? What? This is kind of blowing my mind, and it has nothing to do with the film. (laughs) Okay. So, Rome? Yeah. Romans call it Roma. Yeah. Spain? España. España. Yeah. Yeah. Estados Unidos, USA. Everybody calls countries different things. Yeah. Why wouldn't we all just call it something the same? Because it's a place. It's a country. Like, we don't call Mount Rush... Well, that's a bad example. (laughs) We don't call Mount St. Helens something different. I don't know. Just looking at this fan made me think about that. I'm sorry. You want to know what I think it is? It's another decision by men. (laughs) That makes no fucking fucking sense. sense. I do have to say, for the amount of, like, serious theme of this movie, there were quite a bit of, like, lighter moments, or I think moments that weren't necessarily meant to be funny, but were kind of, like, satire-ish. Yeah, definitely. I think that's to do with, like, the cast... Um, and people that were involved in this movie. I think Matt Damon and Ben Affleck are the type of people who make heavy content yeah. that contains a lot of satire. And Adam Driver's kind of that type of actor, too, at least from what I've seen in his work. And same with Jodie Comer. I could honestly name another movie that Matt Damon is in, if I'm going to be completely honest. And Ben Affleck, like, fine, whatever. You're just kind of, you just kind of exist for me. And Jodie Comer, I haven't really seen anything else of hers either. So Adam Driver was kind of the only other actor that I could watch this and, like, compare it to other performances. And I will just say it was kind of nice to see him in something different than maybe I've seen more as of late. Like, I kind of liked when he was having his more, like, charismatic party moments with Ben Affleck's character. Like, I I enjoyed those scenes because it really was, like, he's living this great life and you kind of see how he does grow a bigger ego and, like, a sense of entitlement over Mm -hmm. his time and how that's only like nurtured by Ben Affleck's character. I, I, it was just interesting because I think the last like big movie that I 
can like remember of Adam Driver is really is like Rise of Skywalker and he's playing obviously like a villain and he doesn't have any chance to like be funny in that yeah. or like really have any sense of like charisma I'm not saying that he doesn't have that in other roles he definitely does and like in girls I think he's definitely more charismatic but <clears throat> just interesting for a change like I liked that because I feel like House of Gucci too he's gonna play he's gonna be like a little more serious <sighs> and stoic previews leading up to this <sighs> film got me really freaking yeah. excited that movie is going to become my personality so yeah just be aware I'm ready for that I'm, I'm ready for so Spencer excited. honestly West Side Story I'm gonna go see because I just love musicals and I love that musical I don't know what it's about even it's though Ansel or... Alcor is in it so I thought they were going to redo it but I guess not. I thought they were going to recast and reshoot, but maybe since they had, like, finished it, it was not really an option. I feel like we normally have, like, questions, but I can't really think of anything offhand. We both know that we would not survive or thrive in this time period. (laughs) Yeah, I don't know. Did you like the movie? I I did, I did. I really enjoyed it. I think another thing that troubles me with period pieces is you don't always know what they're saying Mm -hmm. because they make references that are, like, outdated by centuries. They did a good balance of, like, keeping the old-timey vibe but still making the story, like, very easy to follow. Mm -hmm. I think the language, too. Like, it felt true to the time, but it was also, like, easy to follow. Because sometimes I feel like in period pieces, they go so far off the rails where I'm like, I can't keep track of what you're saying. Yeah, and I would rather be able to, like, keep up with the story. Because I know in my mind, like, oh, this isn't exactly how people talked back then. Yeah. Like, of course it wasn't, but... That's okay. I, that I'm willing to make a sacrifice for that because I'm not going to sit through a three-hour-long movie where I can only pick up on every other thing they're saying because yeah. they're speaking in fucking old English. Yeah. <laughs> I know. That gets annoying. Yeah. Yeah, I liked it too. I Like, is it going to be my favorite movie? No, no. but I also think... It- it was really good. Like, yeah. I think if you're thinking about going to see it, obviously heed the triggers on it. But if you're interested, I'd say it's definitely worth the watch. I do too. I, I loved how it was broken up. I Me think too. that was what I like, like the really chapters. It I don't think I'm going to be watching it again anytime soon just because it did get a little long. Like, certain things we did kind of see over and over again, but that's just because it's like different versions of the truth. And I get yeah. that. But by the end, seeing it for a third time. Yeah, like the party scene for the yeah. third. That was the scene where I was like, okay, we get it. Been there, done that. <laughs> yeah, and Let's to sit through a second rape scene was hard yeah. because we did see it the first time and it was rape the first time. The second one is much more harrowing to watch, yeah. but they're both still rape scenes. Yeah, and I was really hoping for a cut to black. I was just talking about this to one of my um, co-workers who really likes the blinds while you keep talking. One of my co-workers who really likes movies too. He and I were saying that like when film has rape in it, it's just like doesn't always seem necessary and just never rubs us the right way. Obviously it's not supposed to, but like, I don't know. I just definitely didn't feel like I needed to see a second one. Definitely didn't really need either to be honest, but just the fact that the second one was like from beginning to end again was hard to sit through. Yeah, I don't, I don't think, it definitely didn't need two. It honestly probably didn't even need one, because we should just believe, like, it could have been a fade to black, where, like, we don't need to see it through to completion to kind of get the gist. Like, audiences are smart, they know what's going on. So I think that, like, that's a big conversation, I feel like, especially over the last few years of just, like, rape in general being showed in TV and film, and, like, is it necessary? Do we need to be showing it? So I think that's, like, a whole, like, much bigger conversation, and in this case, I definitely don't think we needed to, and I don't think it needed to be shown to completion. Like, we can kind of know, once she says no, how things progress from there. I don't know. I don't think there's, like, a prolific or, like profound thing for me to say about that because I don't know what the answer is but I personally don't think that rape in film and TV is necessary like actually showing the act happening. So next week we're talking about my man, Timmy. This week it was your man, Adam. Uh And honestly both of our girl, Zendaya. Yes. we love that bitch. Yes. You know know what I was thinking with this? Like again, this just goes to show why like casting sometimes is so like important to a movie because if Adam Driver was not in this we would not be covering this. No. Because I'm obsessed with him so I need to watch everything that he's in and that's truly the only reason why we cover this. And like I thought it sounded interesting like medieval but France honestly school. if he wasn't in but it, if he wasn't in a, if it was like Ben Affleck and Matt Damon as the two people like we would 
have never watched it. And, like, Dune next week, if it was not for Zendaya and Timmy, I would not be watching Dune. (laughs) Same. But, yeah, ready to see Timmy and Zendaya. That entertainment wheel. (laughs) What? Matt Damon got shit on you. (laughs) Lilas. Oh, Lilas. Were you going to say something? No, I was just going to say that Entertainment Weekly shot of the two of them. I watched that in an unhealthy amount of time. (laughs) Yeah.